I'm Ryan, I'm back from my third recent Jazz Vinyl Finds video, and I may as well start coining my YouTube channel name, same as my Instagram handle, which is Amanda's Music. So I'll probably change my name on here to that rather than, you know, just my name, because there's nothing really to go off of or anything, so. But anyway, I think the last time I uploaded a video was maybe like almost two months ago now, and I've gotten, you know, a bit of a stack here. And last, at the end of last month, I was working two jobs. So with that came a little bit of extra cash. And then, you know, with extra cash, I spent a little bit more than I usually would on records. So you'll probably be able to tell just based off of some of the things that I got in here. But anyway, I'll just get right into it. So my first one here is uh, Hank Mobley, Dippin'. And this is an original mono copy without the, uh, the plus light P because it was during the conversion. So it's an amazing copy. I think I'd probably say it's VG plus. So very happy with this amazing session. You got Hank Mobley, Lee Morgan, Larry Ridley, I think uh, Billy Higgins, and then Harold Mayburn Jr. Who, you know, it always is really like the icing on the cake for any Lee Morgan and Hank Mobley album. Harold Mayburn is just like one of those pianists that he's just that added touch, the added flair that, you know, on these type of albums in the mid 60s, you had uh, like the Lee Morgan um, cornbread, just those type of, those styles he was just amazing with. So glad to finally get this one. Then my next one is uh, Sonny Rollins plus four, which I, I really never thought I'd get this. I've been on a big uh, Clifford Brown kick lately. I've always loved Clifford Brown, but lately I've just been crossing stuff off the list. And this is one that was uh, pretty high on my one list. This is an original 446 West 50th Street, New York City label. And there was no Bergenfield Fireworks label. I think it was just the Bergenfield Trident label. So I was pretty happy to get this for a deal. It's about, it's about, I'd say, I'd say low end VG. But it, it still plays amazing. I mean, most it's kind of iffy with these discs. Like some uh, some 446 West 50th Street labels, they don't you know they don't play the greatest, but this one does. So I'm I'm very very happy with this. And this was recorded in 1956. This is actually uh, this isn't Clifford Brown's first appearance on Prestige because he did uh, like two 10 inches with Art Farmer and then the Swedish All-Stars. So this is actually his like third or fourth. I don't know, cause there's like different, uh, they kind of split those sessions up on the 10 inch discs, but this is his last one for Prestige. And he did it with Sonny Rollins, Richie Powell, Max Roach, and then George Morrow. Yeah, and which is, you know, that's, that's the group right there. I mean, after Harold Land left, Sonny Rollins joined. And in my opinion, I feel like I feel like he he fit the bill way more than Harold Land did. And you know, Sonny Rollins always looked up to Clifford Brown. You hear like any type of interview that Sonny did, he'd always talk about how, you know, he, Clifford Brown was just never doing drugs. He, he was just like, he was a bright man. Everybody wanted to be like him, play like him, practice like him, everything. So I think this album is really historic for that because Sonny Rollins, Clifford Brown, you know, that's almost like Miles and Coltrane. So, very happy to get this. I just got it the other day, so. I've played it a few times. Sounds amazing, like I said. But. And then my next three, actually my first video, I actually talked about these. I really wanted these for probably since I've been collecting. And I didn't know that I could stream these on Spotify, but I, I ended up figuring that out after I got them, so. Luckily, I got to stream these, not not stream them, I got to listen to these for the first time on vinyl, so that was definitely an amazing experience, but we got Mainstream 1958, Wilbur Harden, really like an all-stars type of album, East Coast Jazz Scene, Original, Savoy, Deep Groove. I think there's like some Japanese reissues of the three, uh, it's like Wilbur Harden was the leader and then I think Coltrane was a co-leader on a few of these. But yeah, I got Mainstream 1958 and then I also got Jazz Way Out, which is probably my favorite of the three. Just, it's just 
so amazing just how their take their their approach to uh because these sounds on on these albums are a bit further out than usual and i think even on the liner notes i think it's on um on tanganyika strut which is the other one i think it says it mentions about how the sound is a bit they it says uh now, liner notes are by H. Allen Stein, who I haven't seen on liner notes before, but it says whether you call it far out, near in, or funky, or mainstream, modern, or beat, this is the sound. So they definitely, they definitely had a, at least the general idea of the direction they wanted to head in making these albums, because they all have, you know, this. It's a common sound. It's different though because these were recorded in 1958, and you know the sound of 1958 was hard bop, driving bop, but this is just, I think uh, Jazz Way Out would probably have to be the most far out in my opinion. I think the track uh, Umba is probably the craziest, like the way it's set up, but it's, it sounds so amazing. Just the, their take is just crazy. But this is actually a, an original too. All three are original. I really have no idea how I got this lucky, but I actually got these off of a, a seller and a guy off Instagram named Strictly Headies. I forget his real name, but I snagged these on auction. I honestly probably overpaid a little bit, but this one was uh, in archive condition, he said, and I, I believe it because there's like no marks whatsoever. And then uh, Mainstream 1958 was in, uh, I'd say like excellent condition. They play amazing. Savoy is just probably one of the most underrated labels and I, I don't have too many so these were actually some of my first so I got Jazz Way Out and then Mainstream 1958 from Strictly Headies and then I got this a couple days ago so very happy with this one this one is probably the most known of the three uh, at least looking on Discogs mo more people have this on their want list than the other the other ones but they they're creeping up in price I mean like it's probably because Tommy Flanagan is on here, but every Tommy Flanagan album is just... At, at least these aren't, but the other Tommy Flanagan albums are like above $1,000, so... Maybe these will creep up to that, I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm glad that I got that. I got I got all three of them before they creeped up a, at least a little bit. This is an original, too. Crazy condition. Just sounds so amazing. And I think that uh, 1958, which is the year that all these were recorded, actually uh, Jazz Way Out and uh, Tanganyika Strut, I think were released in 1960, but they were all recorded in 58. But anyway, I think that uh, I prefer Coltrane's 1958 recordings rather than any other year, just because I feel like he was really on the cutting edge. He was he was coming off of, uh, off of heroin and his addiction. I think he was still drinking a lot though, but his output in 1958 was just crazy. I mean, that kind of like launched his career. You had a, uh, after that he had Kind of Blue and you know, it's just, it's crazy to see how he evolved from 1958. He had his uh, album Soul Train, which is probably one of my favorites, but it just, it's just crazy to think how, uh, how far he came in such a short span. I mean, you go from like, Soul Train to uh, at Live with the Village Vanguard again, and it's just crazy to think. But anyway, my next one is uh, Grishan Moncur the Third Evolution, which just was pretty high on my one list. This is actually probably my most streamed album of the year, I'd say. I'll have to look at my Spotify uh, stats, but this is actually kind of weird because it's got the original 43 West 61st Street jacket. It's in crazy condition too, near mint, I'd probably say. You can just see how, there's no lamination because I think they did away with that on uh, on these later pressings before they went to Liberty. And then the disc is actually a Liberty copy. So I don't, I'm not sure how that happened because usually you'll, you'll see an original jacket with the Liberty side too and then uh, New York USA side one, but this doesn't have that. But anyway, this is a VG plus copy, probably VG to VG plus. There's a line mark on here that makes a little bit of a noise for about three or four rotations. 
but it plays plays through amazing. Definitely uh, one of the albums that I, at first I wanted this in stereo, but I began to uh, change my mind on these free jazz albums because I like hearing the separation between, uh, like, you know, you want to hear, for instance, you have uh, Coltrane's, uh, maybe something like Meditations. You want to hear uh, Sanders, like Pharaoh Sanders on a different channel, and you want to hear Jimmy Garrison on another one. Like, especially on a live album, like maybe Live with the Village Vanguard again, you want to hear the separation on the stage. And this is, uh, this is one of those albums that I kind of like to hear in stereo. But it is good in mono. I've heard it in mono on Spotify when I, you know, just set the settings to mono. But I, I think I prefer this in stereo. So very happy to get that off my list. He actually, uh, Grisham Munker actually sadly passed away a little bit after I recorded my last video and his album shot up in price. I mean, I seen a, I seen a, I think it was like a second stereo pressing with no P go for like $300, $400. And it was in like VG to VG plus condition. And it's just very like, I don't know. Like I realized we pay a lot of money for these records but sometimes I wonder how the artists would actually feel like seeing their albums go for that much and then you know they didn't get that much money back then they people were buying their albums for two dollars and fifty cents which you know would probably translate to like thirty dollars now with a conversion but I think about that often but anyway my next one is uh, Curtis Fuller, Soul Trombone, Freddie Hubbard, Jimmy Merritt who uh, honestly very surprised me and then Cedar Walton, who I, I think fit the bill on this album perfectly because this album at first seems, seems like it might be a McCoy Tyner like type of album. and But Cedar Walton really uh, is similar to McCoy Tyner in the way that he plays his chords. Like they leave accents and tones that like resonate. They resonate with the piano and it's just, it's a crazy way to, it's a crazy approach to piano really, in my opinion. So I think Cedar Walton did an amazing job on this album. Then you got Jimmy Heath, who, you know, of the group, like, if you think of the saxophones, Jimmy Heath and John Gilmore and Coltrane, they were all in that group. So I, I love him to, I love to see him on this album. And then uh, G.T. Hogan, who I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not, I haven't heard of him. And then Jimmy Cobb, who's listed as Jim Cobb on here, which, you know, Jim Jimmy Cobb's just amazing. But. I wanted to uh, have a, every time I come across an artist that I just like fall in love with, I always want to complete their discography, but I want to have certain approaches to doing that. So like for Coltrane, I want to get everything like no matter what, like bootlegs and all that. And But I want to try and stick to US pressings and then maybe for Sonny Rollins, I want to do all US pressings, but uh, you know, just go the cheap way but still finish it. And then Hank Mobley, I want to get all his uh, original albums in original form, which I know is pretty big, pretty pretty big goal, really. But, um, and then uh, Curtis Fuller, I want to get all his promo copies for some reason. I I'm not sure why. I think it's just for the fact that they're more widely available and they're more affordable too. So this is not a promo copy, but it is a sample copy. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a promo to an extent. It's just not the white label. Got really lucky with this. I bought it off of eBay. Seller had it listed as VG Plus. It's near mint, very glossy. Probably doesn't even look like it was played. And I got really lucky. It's an extremely flat disc. Most of the time I usually don't get a flat disc when I buy off of eBay, but this was very flat. Very happy with this. And then the jacket's in amazing condition too very glossy gatefold you know it's just amazing impulse picking up an impulse album it's almost equivalent to blue note in my opinion but very happy to get this i stream this a lot too along with uh grishan munker the third evolution this is probably another album that i listen to a lot this year so very happy to get that and then the next one too is actually Another album that I've been streaming probably the past couple months now back and forth back and forth like it's just amazing, but it's the remarkable Carmel Jones Very underrated trumpeter 
he did a lot of stuff on Pacific Jazz, and then he actually went overseas with uh, Nathan Davis and did some stuff on over there on those labels. But this is uh, recorded in, I think it was 1961, maybe 1960. So it has a very classic bebop sound, almost like uh, it's very Clifford Brown-esque. Like, I feel like, uh, you know, Clifford Brown came from the school of Fats Navarro, and then Lee Morgan came from the school of Clifford Brown and Fats Navarro, but uh, Carmel Jones came from the school of Clifford Brown, and you can really tell with the licks that he plays, the, definitely like the ballads, his approach to them. I think you got, um, there's another ballad other than uh, Come Rain or Come Shine on here. I think it's Sad March, or Stel Stelissa, which Carmel Jones actually wrote. But my favorite track on this album is definitely Full Moon and Empty Arms. Just the beginning of, of that song is just, I could re play that on repeat so many times. It's just so amazing. They go back and forth. Uh, Harold Land and, which Her Harold Land is actually on this, which surprised me because uh, after he left uh, Emerson with uh, Clifford Brown and that group, I had no idea what he did. I mean, I think in my eyes, I seen it as like a gap because I seen Harold Land pop up again in like the late 60s with uh, like Bobby Hutcherson in San Francisco. But I guess he maybe he was doing stuff on uh, on Pacific Jazz. But either way, he did an amazing job on this. And like I said, this is a very Clifford Brown-esque album. And I think uh, for having Harold Land on here, it makes it that much better. So, very happy to get this. It's probably like a VG copy. I actually bought this off of Discogs. I didn't ask for pictures or anything, so I thought it was gonna be an original press, but it's not because the original had green uh, background. This one has a blue background. So maybe I'll pick up an original later down the road, but just happy to get the music, so glad I got that. Then my next one is uh, Bud Powell, uh, Volume 2, which I have Volume 3. This is a Liberty copy. Of uh, I think it's a electronically stereo rechanneled. Re yeah, it's a rechanneled stereo copy. So still sounds great. I played it a few times. Just haven't, I haven't cleaned a lot of these. I honestly haven't had time, but I will probably soon. And then it's got the shrink wrap on it still. And you know, I may as well... Uh, May as well take it off, I guess. No better time to do that. So, just in amazing condition. I mean, it just looks amazing. Like, I, I could care less that it's in Liberty Copy. Just pristine condition. I think it's uh, got the fold in the, um, in the jacket. Yeah, so very happy to get this. I got this for like $18, which you know you can't beat. But I actually don't think this has the Van Gelder stamp. I think it's probably because it's stereo, but I'm not sure if Van Gelder did this one. But anyway, glad to get this. And my next one is Mal Waldron at the piano, plays the moods of Billie Holiday. Probably my favorite Mal Waldron album, if I'm being honest. And probably the hardest to get a hold of because this is like a thousand dollar album if you're buying it near mint maybe uh i think i seen one go for like three hundred dollars with a split cover like the whole scene was just split on top and then i think the disc was like g plus but i actually paid 99 cents for this i got it shipped over here from japan so i think it was like plus 18 shipping so i really only paid like 20 dollars for this very happy with it sounds amazing you know, I'm not gonna, you can't beat uh, $20 for a reissue rather than like an $1,000 copy, so. And this is something that I probably play a lot. The, uh, the track Left Alone, which Mal Waldron composed, probably my one of my favorite compositions of all time. Anytime anybody uh, records that song, it just sounds amazing. I mean, Eric Dolphy did a, a version of it with uh, Booker Little and I just probably played that tons of times. I want that album on vinyl too. Probably go for that next. But yeah, very happy to get this, especially for how cheap it was, so. If, I think this goes up a lot on eBay too, uh, from a Japan seller, so 
definitely pick this up. I mean, $20 for this is not bad at all. So Then my next one is Chuck Wayne Morning Mist, which this is actually a very surprising because I got this and I, you know, I, I don't know who Chuck Wayne is, but it had a very uh, Kenny Burrell type of sound to it. He played he plays the guitar like Kenny Burrell. Reminded me of Midnight Blue. But it's a trio album with Chuck Wayne, Joe Williams, and then Ronnie Bedford. And then there's there's some good standards on here. Uh, Someone to Watch Over Me. Uh, this Song Is You. I think there's another good one on side B. Lil Darlin, which, you know, Kai Winding did a version of that, and I, that's just probably my favorite. But Amazing album. I think it's fairly cheap, too. It's like $15, $16. So definitely, definitely look out for this because it just sounds amazing. I got a near mint copy. I actually went to a yard sale and got a few albums. Actually, not a few. I probably bought like fifty, a dollar a piece too. So got this for a dollar. So you know you can't beat that on the Blue Trident label, on Prestige. So very happy with that. Then my next one is uh, another Prestige album, Clifford Brown Memorial album. I have the Blue Note Clifford Brown Memorial album. But I, now I got this. This doesn't have the deep groove, so this isn't the original. The original was like a, it was like a white and blue cover, and then it had a picture of like swings, which you know I I wanted an original, but after the artist passed away, I'm I don't really go for uh, those type of albums. Like I, I'm fine with the reissue, so very happy with this. It plays VG plus. It's got an interesting lineup too. I think it's actually split from two sessions, which is actually from the 10 inches with the Swedish All-Stars and then Quincy Jones. And then the other side was with uh, Benny Golson and Gigi Grice and then Tad Dameron, Percy Heath, Philly Joe, Oscar Estelle, I'm not sure who he is. And then Idris Solomon, who is probably one of my favorite trumpeters. Been listening to him so much. He made so many appearances on prestige albums that, you know, people don't really hear of. I think, like, Interplay for Two Trumpets and Two Tenors, that's probably one of my favorite albums with him on there, at least. So, very, uh, very good uh, two sessions on this. So, I got this for a deal of, like, $10, $15. So, happy with that. And then my next one is a Bill Evans album. And I don't have too many. I have a few OJCs, and you know, even getting a hold of like an OJC copy is kind of hard to do. But this is actually a reissue on the turquoise label, pristine condition. I got this from a yard sale for a dollar. Still in the shrink. And there's the label. Plays amazing. I play this a few times. So I'm going to put it in a, a MoFi sleeve here soon. I just haven't had time. But very happy to get this. So it's Bill Evans with, uh, I think, Philly Joe. And then I think, uh, I'm trying to remember who the bassist is. I think it's just Paul Chambers. I'll have to see. I think it was like Miles Davis's section. Oh, it's actually Sam Jones. Sam Jones, yeah. So very good album. Everybody digs uh, Bill Evans. And it's got some quotes from Miles Davis, George Shearing, and Ahmad Jamal on the front, and and Averly. So, very happy to get this. And my next one is actually a. Uh, this is actually going to replace my mono copy because my mono copy is pretty beat. But this is the West Montgomery Trio, on Riverside. Another, I got this from the the same yard sale for a dollar, and it's a stereo copy. It's still in the the onion. Onion wrap, so. Haven't played it yet, but I did pull it out. I just wanted to see how glossy it was. So very happy with this. Very clean, as all the the ones I got from that yard sale. So then my next two are actually 10 inches on Blue Note. So I got 5028 JJ Johnson, which this was actually uh, reissued on JJ Johnson's like uh, 12 inches, the Eminent JJ Johnson Volume One and then Volume Two. But I wanted this 10 inch because it had Clifford Brown on it. And it's got that it's got that song Turnpike. And you know, Clifford Brown just goes crazy on that one. 
but other than Turnpike, it's got uh, Stretch One, I, It Could Happen to You, which is a very good, very good rendition. And then Get Happy, Lover Man, I love that one. And then uh, Capri by Gigi Grice, which, you know, any Gigi Grice composition is just crazy. I love Gigi Grice's writing. I actually missed picking up uh, Gigi Grice meets Art Farmer. So I, I regret that. That was the other day. I missed that on eBay. Someone got it for a deal. But very happy to get this. Then my next one is uh, Fats Navarro Memorial Album. And I, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't really listened to Fats Navarro like that. But in, when I got this, it amazed me. Because I realized how good he was and I realized how much I was missing out. Because he's on here with Tad Dameron's Sextet. Howard McGee's Sextet. And then Bud Powell's Modernist, which, you know, Fats Navarro and Bud Powell, I've come to learn that that's almost like Miles and Train and Mobley and Morgan. So, very happy to get this. It's actually a pristine copy. You can see the, the covers. It's only got a sticker on it from somebody's catalog. And then the original numbers. And then the disc is like spotless. Very happy with this. But it's got the catalog sticker like the cover does. No marks whatsoever. Very happy with this. Very flat. That opening track. I think it's a squirrel. And then 52nd Street theme. Anytime anybody plays that, it's just amazing. So very happy to get this. This was actually on my want list for a little bit. Probably... I'd say I'd say about six months. So this is actually my first Fats Navarro album. I want the the Memorial album on uh, Savoy because I know there's a lot of good people on there. So maybe I'll go for that next. And then my next two are actually the same. Don't ask me why. I just got I got two of the same records, but I actually think that they're different pressings because. Well, here's here's one. Brown and Roach Incorporated. And then blue text backing, so it's the first pressing, which I actually made a mistake in my last video. But I didn't. I, I just I said it wrong, but I knew in my mind that I was uh, I was right. But the first pressings were actually the blue text and pictures on the back, and then came the the black and black and white pictures. So very happy to get this. And then both of these copies are VG plus. Here's the other one. And then you can see that uh, the back of this cover is a little bit more faded. But the only difference is, is that one has the, um, like the haze to it. Like there's a, there's like a, a hiss on the, like for the background noise. But this is, uh, this one is actually the better copy. Very glossy still, surprisingly, because you always see an Emerson album with that blue haze to it. It's very annoying and very disappointing when you pull out a good album. But this one's got like that silver ring on it, which I think I may be wrong on this, but I think this would be considered a second pressing and then the other one with the haze and no silver ring would be considered the first. And the jackets are actually kind of made differently, although they still have the blue text and everything. But very happy to get these. And I'll probably sell one of these, to be honest. I, I just bought another one because I wanted to replace my other copy with the Haze. So, very happy to get these. And then my next two are Sonny Rollins albums. And these are both uh, Blue Note white labels, or white Bs. So, they're both stereo. Sonny Rollins, Volume 1. Probably my favorite Blue Note Sonny Rollins album. Sounds amazing, too. I really uh, like hearing a, an original Blue Note compared to one of these. There really is no... I mean, you have that authenticity and the physicality of an original, but this sounds just as good, if not better. So, And one thing is that these, that these both of these don't have the, the, Van, the Van Gelder stamp, so kind of disappointing for that, but they still sound good, so I'm not complaining. But this is a Nukes Time, Sonny Rollins. I actually have a, I think it's like a 2003 copy or something like that on the 307 
like West 60th Street or something like that. And that doesn't sound too great, but this sounds heck of a lot better. So very happy to get this. And then the cover's a little bit beat, but I really can't complain because I only paid like $8 for this one. I think I paid like $12 for the other one. So very happy with these. And then my next one is Off to the Races by Donald Byrd. And like, a, like I said a lot in this video, really Donald Byrd and Pepper Adams, it's just like Miles and Train again. So very, very happy to get this. But this is like a third stereo pressing. No, nothing wrong with that. It's just, I, I kind of wanted an original at first, but I'm, I'm happy with this one. I, I think it's just because this one is uh, electronically re-recorded for stereo. But it's like I said, it sounds amazing, so no worries with it. Pristine copy. VG Plus all around. And my next one is Dinah Jams, which I want an original of this because Clifford Brown's on here. But I actually got this from that yard sale for a dollar. And this is the reissue on Mercury. I haven't cleaned it yet. I plan on listening to this here soon. And then I guess before I go any further, I also got a, I've been trying to cross off some of my tone poets that I'm missing. So I ended up going to my local shop a few days ago and they had a couple tone poets that I, I was just looking for forever. I actually sold The Kicker by Bobby Hutcherson because I wanted to get something else. So I kind of regret that because it doesn't seem like Analog Productions is gonna, or like anybody's gonna repress these tone poet titles. I'll go grab these real quick. So I got It's Time by Jackie McLean, which I, I wanted this for a while because Charles Tolliver is on here, and I think Charles Tolliver, early Charles Tolliver is, you know, crazy, crazy trumpeter. But this lineup is pretty interesting. You got Herbie Hancock, Cecil McBee, one of my favorite bassists of all time. Then you got Roy Haynes, just the classic drummer. I think he he had that awesome, uh, he had that era of like going into more free jazz as compared to like, you know, playing a standards, playing standards for Dinah Washington or something, or Sarah Vaughn, because I think he's on Sarah Vaughn's album on uh, Emerson. So very happy to get that. And then I also got Bird in Flight. Donald Bird, which I got these for amazing prices. I, I paid 40 for this one, which I think the lowest one on Discogs was like uh, 50 possibly. And then on It's Time by Jackie McLean, I think the lowest one was 70. So I really can't complain. I, I paid 50, for, yeah, $50 for that one. So very happy to get those. And then I also got them open, which, you know, I, I haven't been getting a lot of, I don't have a lot of luck getting sealed tone poets because I got Breaking Point by Freddie Hubbard and on my favorite track Far Away there's like a there's a a feelable scratch that has ticks on the intro to it and you know that the intro to Far Away is crazy and very memorable and so I hate hearing ticks and rotational ticks every time I listen to that so I'm very happy to like see it take the disc out look at it make sure everything's all right and it's not warped or anything I, I have like two warped tone poets so very happy to get a open copy as dumb as that sounds but anyway my next one is a uh, MJQ just self-titled on Atlantic with the black label deep groove this is pretty easy to get but every time I find it it's always beat like this is a near mint copy still in the um, the onion onion wrap so very happy to get this and you know every MJQ album I always want in pristine condition because you know there there is no horn section so it's just, you know, piano, bass, and bells. So very happy to get this. And I also have been trying to complete MJQ's collection now for a little bit. And you know, that's more, uh, that's the easy goal compared to some of my other ones. So very happy to do that. And then my next three are all Charlie Parker albums. And they're all 70s Savoy reissues. So my first here is the Immortal Charlie Parker. I actually got these same day i got a my tone poets from my local shop very clean still glossy it's, it's the the maroon label as compared to that the bright red from the early savoy pressings so 
that's volume one, which I have a copy of. I have an OG of volume two, but this is a this is another reissue from the '70s on the Maroon label. I think I paid like five dollars for each of these. Very happy with it because you getting any like Parker on Savoy or any any other label than Verve is kind of difficult. And you know, I really usually listen to Charlie Parker on Verve, like on the compilations, like the Genius of Charlie Parker, which you know they're good, but you miss out if you're just sticking straight to those. And I, I have missed out, so very happy to get some Savoy Parker albums. And then my next one here is uh, Miles Sketches of Spain, which is a mono copy. I've been waiting forever. I don't know why, but luckily I got this from the yard sale for a dollar, mint condition. You can see when I take it out, it's got the fold, so you, you know it's, you know it's perfect. Haven't listened to it much. I think I listened to it like one time. Sounds amazing. I want to get a. I'd like to see this in a 45 reissue. I think there's probably one out there, but I know there's a like a HQ pressing on 180 gram 33. So maybe I'll get that instead. But very happy to find a, finally get a copy. So. And it's actually a repress. It's the one with the CBS on the top of the label. So either way, it's still great. But anyway, I got this next section here, and it's a lot of cheap heat. So I'll kind of go through it fast because I know my video is up at 36 minutes now. So here's a Word Old Gray. And I think this is like a... I think this was released after he passed away. But this is kind of hard to come by fairly cheap when I bought it. I think it was like $10. It's on Ozone, that unofficial label. But it's in great condition. So very happy to get that. I don't have any of his albums. I think I just have maybe one, like a compilation or something with he, like where he appears on one track. My next one is uh, Helen Merrill, which is a reissue. And then, you know, this album is just I think it's like even a thousand dollars on the top end, like near mint. So I got this one on a trip jazz for like five bucks, near mint condition. I'm not sure how this was uh, mastered or anything or how they like transferred this. I think it's too early for it to be, you know, good. So at least I got a copy. I'm not gonna pay a thousand dollars, three hundred dollars. I'm fine with paying five bucks and then crossing off the list. You know, Clifford Brown's on here, so very happy to get this. Then my next one is uh, Mulgrew Miller, who is an amazing pianist. He did some stuff with Roy Hargrove. He, they had that Record Store Day release. I think it was like two years ago now. And, you know, Roy Hargrove and Mulgrew Miller, just an amazing combination. This is uh, Keys to the City, and I think this may be a trio, too. Mulgrew Miller, Ira Coleman... And then Marvin Smith, who I think I've heard of, I'm not sure. And then this album was actually produced by Oren Keep News, who did Riverside albums, so that's kind of interesting. It's mint condition, so very happy to get this. I don't have any Mulgrew Miller albums except that uh, that record store they released with him and uh, Roy Hargrove, which is not amazing. So very happy to get this. And they, they got some... Interesting tracks on here. I mean, Inner Urge is on here by Joe Henderson. You know, that's like kind of when he went a little bit further out than he usually went. So, Inner Urge, Every Time We Say Goodbye, I'm sure that's amazing. You got Milestones by Davis, and then you got Warm Valley by Ellington, and a few other ones, but uh, I think those are his own compositions. Yeah, like song, song for Darnell, that's his own. I think this is like late... 80s no actually it's 85 so probably listen to this after I get done with the video then my next couple are Charlie Bird albums on Riverside which you know cheap heat still in the shrink Mr. Guitar by Char Charlie Bird stereo copy I think some of these are reissues and some of them aren't this may be the original I don't think that's a deep groove well, it is a stereo copy. And then Blue Sonata, stereo copy. And then Charlie Bird with voices. And then I also have another MJQ album. 
the George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess soundtrack with, you know, the obvious crazy great tracks, Summertime, Bess, You Is My Woman, and I think uh, It Ain't Necessarily So is probably would have to be my favorite. So very happy to get this in mint condition, still in the shrink, original. I'll pull it out. I think it's an original mono. It may be a different fan color. Yeah, it's the black fan. I'm not sure what the original of this was. It may have been the white fan, but either way, it's in great condition. Very happy to get it. Then the next one is Basie Plays Hefty. Dynamic stereo copy. I have a mono copy. It sounds great. So I'm happy to get a stereo copy because this album is amazing. Definitely a easily obtainable so definitely be on the lookout for this if you can get it in good condition at least and then my next my next couple are all guitar albums mostly by uh, one artist in particular who I've been trying to get into I have one of his albums Johnny Smith sings for uh, Beverly Kenny but now I got a few more so I got the guitar world of Johnny Smith which this is like a 60s release for him on uh what was it on roost but there is no deep groove and all these albums are men i got these from the same yard sale for a dollar so happy to get them johnny smith reminiscing which i think this is like the latest of the johnny smith albums that i have now and then all of them are in the shrink for the most part and then you got johnny smith plays the jimmy van Heusen book and then that's got you know, the track Swinging on a Star, I Could Have Told You, It Could Have Happened to You, I Thought About You, Deep in a Dream, you know, just all those crazy standards. And then The Sound of Johnny Smith Guitar, another Roost release. This may be, oh, it's not actually, yeah, it's not Deep Groove. Still Amazing Condition. And then, then a Verve release for Johnny Smith with a gatefold pretty cool because I think uh, who's on here actually it's not who's on here it's the songs that's on here so he has a few uh, Beatles songs on here like Michelle um, yesterday so you know that that's kind of interesting to hear his uh, his take on on those songs and then you got my favorite things on here the girl from Ipanema so very very cool release this is actually recorded in 1967 so a later release for Johnny Smith haven't listened to it yet but I'm sure those tracks are amazing then my next one is Wes Montgomery Tequila and it's surprising to me because Ron Carter is on here which I didn't know Ron Carter did anything with Wes Montgomery but amazing album I've streamed this a couple times haven't played it on vinyl though Really haven't had time to really take take these uh, records out and clean them. But then my next one is uh, Commodore Records. It's like the same compilation that Billie Holiday had on the 10 inch for Commodore, but this is a reissue. So very into Billie Holiday. I have the um, her 10 inch on Verve at the Philharmonic, which I want to do a video on, like just that album in particular. Maybe just a video on Billie Holiday in particular. But very happy to get any Billy Holiday album. So, and here's my next one, The Happy Bird by Charlie Parker. This is like a lot, two live sessions put together, and they honestly don't sound the, the greatest. So, and you know, this label, Charlie Parker Records, it's not really the greatest label, if I'm being honest, but it's good music, so I'm not complaining. And then it is in mint condition, uh, still in the shrink. I think this even had the fold. Probably not. Just still looks untouched, really. So, happy to get that. And then here's Johnny Hodges and Wild Bill Davis. Uh, Blue Rabbit, which I think I've seen a lot of reissues for this. So, very happy to get this. The, the cover makes the music look enticing. I mean, you can kind of see that how glossy it is looks amazing pristine copy and it may be deep groove I'm not sure actually no it's the MGM press but either way very happy with it 
And then I have another Johnny Hodges album in here. I think it plays, it's Johnny Hodges plays for Sandy. Or no, it's Johnny Hodges Sandy's Gone, which has some good tracks on here. Blue Velvet, Candy's Theme, Wonderful, Wonderful. So, Still in the Shrink, Pristine Copy. Happy to always get uh, Johnny Hodges. Then my next one is MJQ at Carnegie Hall. Original, stereo copy, gatefold, pristine. So very happy to get that. And then my last one is Art Pepper and Shelly Main, which this is a reissue of another uh, release. I'm not, I'm unsure. Maybe two uh, releases put together, but this is on the Charlie Parker Records. And surprisingly, this one actually sounds kind of good. So very happy with this. There's songs on here, Move by Miles Davis, Caravan, um, Besame Mucho, Diane, I Surrender Dear, great stuff on here, so. I forget what the original was. I can't think of it, but very happy to get this. And then with that, I think that's the last of the my recent finds. I think I have a few more, but uh, that's like the good stuff, so. Anyway, thank you for watching. I thank everybody for the support, all the feedback I've been getting. You know, it's just crazy to think that there's such a good community on here. Really, like, out of all my friends and everything, nobody listens to jazz. Nobody listens to this type of music. So every time I get a comment or, you know, talk to somebody on Instagram about it, about jazz in general, just makes my day that much better because... Everybody likes to talk about the things they like, you know, and there's not many people around here, at least, that like jazz, so very happy to have a great community on here, and then so many amazing people give me great feedback and everything, so I thank everybody for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.